أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليك يا إمام الصاحب العسل والزمان My dearest brothers, sisters and highly respected elders السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the 8th, I think the 8th or the 9th lecture that we have on the mystics of the prayer And just before we get started, I would like to request that we all can recite Amman Yajibu five times for the Shifa of Sayyid Hadr Hassanayn And also all of those suffering from any sort of illness around the world Bismillahirrahmanirrahim أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم And without any more delay, I would like to welcome Sayyid Muhammad Hashimi to inshallah begin his lecture tonight أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم عداء الله لقيام يوم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters it's another توفيق for us to have these sessions during the holy month of Ramadan especially tonight the first night of Layal al-Qadr the nights of Qadr the most auspicious occasion for anyone for anyone to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, this night, you know, it's just once a year. It doesn't repeat. The Laylatul Qadr of the next year is the Laylatul Qadr of the next year. This is not this Laylatul Qadr. We have to stick with this Layal al-Qadr tonight and the night of the 21st of Ramadan and the night of the 23rd of Ramadan. And it starts tonight. It's not like one of them is just Laylatul Qadr. No, there are some levels here. The night of 19, 21, and 23. So please don't miss any one of this very, very magnificent times to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also uh, another occasion tonight, tonight and tomorrow, which is the... Uh, assassination of Maulana Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, by Ibn Muljam al-Muradi, the filthiest creature ever lived on this planet, struck the head of Amir al-Mu'mineen in the masjid. And the interesting thing is, it was during the prayer, the subject of our discussions. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the real followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Following Amir al-Mu'mineen is not just to say, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Haydar, Haydar, Haydar. No, it's to follow Amir al-Mu'mineen in his manners, in his ethics, in his salat, which was great. Yes, and untouchable. No one can reach that level, but we hope to get closer to the salat prayer of Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam. Last night, we started our discussion by talking about intention as a very important part of Salat, or maybe the, the most important of the part of the prayer. Tonight, I'm going to talk about this topic. Why intention is so important in the Salat? What is the reason behind the intention? What makes intention, you know, that important that every movement, every action in the Salat its value depends on the intention, on the value of intention, on the, 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 the level of the purification of intention. 
to talk about that, so we're going to talk about, inshallah, intention tonight as a bridge <coughs> between physical world of the human being and the material world of the human being. If you want to figure out what is the importance of the uh, intention, before that, we need to understand the reality of the human being. And as many of you know, uh, and we talked, you know, like seven sessions last year about this topic, human being is the most complicated creature in the universe, in the existence. Very, you know, you know, weird somehow creature, which has physical levels and spiritual levels. Tonight I'm uh, trying to say that the intention connects the physical world of the human being to the spiritual world of the human being. Look, Salat is the combination of some actions. Yes, it is Ruku, Sujood, some Adhkar, you recite something, Suratul Ham, Suratul Fatiha, you have Qunut, you have Tashahud, you have Salam, too many actions and words. But we know that all the actions are physical actions. You bow down and it's physical. You talk and it's physical, it's a voice, yes? You stand up and it's a physical action. So how a Salat with this too many physical actions can be the mi'raj of mu'min, can be the ascension of mu'min. Is there any relation between this too many physical activities with the material world of this universe? Because we know, and as Sayyid Haider mentioned, I think in the last sessions, this ascension is not you know, to go higher in this skies that, that, that are visible here. Like, you know, Interstellar, yeah? Those movies that they go to the solar system or beyond. No, this is not the real ascension. It's not ascension at all because it's all in the physical world. It's not ascension. You're not going anywhere. You're here. Ascension is to be able to be released from the physical and material world. So how is it possible with this physical activities? The answer is in the concept of aniya, the intention. The intention. As you know, and as we talked, I just reminding you some of those things that we discussed once. In Quran, we recite and we learn that the human being is the combination of the physical world and the material world. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم We have in Surah Al-Sad أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذ قال ربك للملائكة إني خالق بشرا من طين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said reveals on, upon Rasulullah in the Quran O Rasul, remind the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told to his angels I'm going to create a human being out of clay This is clay, yes? Completely material فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَأُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ And after I fashioned him, I completed the uh, physical creation of this human being, which is called سَوَّيْتُهُ إِسْتَوَاء تَسْوِيَةً The first step. And the second step. وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي And I breathed into the, this physical body of this human being, my spirit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So the material aspect of the human being, clay, and the immaterial aspect of the human being, and the spiritual aspect of the human being, which is the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, what is the spirit of Allah? It, it needs another session, another discussion. So, we have two levels of the existence. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after doing this, He says, فَقَأُوا لَهُ سَاجَدِينَ he instructs the angels, now bow down to this human being. Because this is the secret of the all the universe. Because this is the combination of the all lines and all levels of the creation. Human being. So, if we are a combination of the material world and the immaterial world, 
So there is a connection between our physical world and physical aspect and the spiritual aspect. You know, tonight is Laylatul Qatr, the night of 19th of the holy month of Ramadan. We recite in Surah Al Qadr, Tanazzalul Malaikatu Barruhu, Fiha bi idni Rabbihim in Kulla Amr. And the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are descending tonight. They are dispatched from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the earth and this planet. Tanazzalu. In some narrations, we have this word there by Ma'asum that the, 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 this planet is filled by angels tonight. Filled by angels, millions of millions of millions. But could you see anything? Do you see anything? Now it, it's going, like for us, it's night here. Do you see angels? Do you see the ruh? Tanazzalul malaika tuval ruh. You know, ruh is something different from angels. It needs another discussion, inshallah. Ruh is the greatest creation of the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. Sometimes maybe we have this tawfiq to talk about the ruh. But do you see the ruh? Do you see the angels? You don't see, but they exist. You don't see, but they exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness here. He says they are here. They are from the immaterial aspect of this world. And they are connected to us tonight somehow. So, is there any way for the human being as a combination of the ruh and the jism, physic and this spirit, is there any way for this human being to make somehow a connection between this physical world of the human being and the spiritual world of the human being? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. We can have this connection by the awareness of the human being. You know, the awareness, the understanding of the human being, inshallah, someday you will learn it in the philosophy, Islamic philosophy. The awareness of the human being is not material. It's not materialistic. The awareness is not the brain. Brain is the means of awareness is the means of awareness. The first level of the awareness of the human being and of the knowledge and ilm of the human being is the mind, the mind of the human being. What is the mind? Mind is the place that in which you understand and figure out the images of this world. All your five senses gives you the images of this world and you process these images in your mind. The brain helps your mind to understand these images. Okay. So you understand this world. You are aware of this world, firstly, by your mind. And the first level of intention lies in the mind. In the mind. What is this? This is when you say, I'm going to perform this salat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're not witnessing any angels or ruh, yes. But you, by your mind, because of the aql and because of the teachings of Quran, you believe that there is an unseen vault that, are, that is superior to this vault. And that is the reality of this universe. And you can somehow connect yourself to that vault. You understand this with the mind. And all of us who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels of the prophets, we all believe that through what? Through our mind. I don't know, maybe some of Urafa be among your brothers and sisters, but you know, ordinary people like me, we understand this concept. These are concepts for me. I'm not going anywhere higher for now. So the first level of the connection between the physicality and the unseen vote, the spiritual vote, is the mind. So, so, your salat, your prayer is not accepted unless you have intention. Why? Because the intention 
the intention values all your actions. It makes all your actions somehow spiritual. So you can bow down for a thousand years somewhere in some corners of this world. And you're not going anywhere. Not to the paradise and not the higher levels of spirituality. But you can be in a sujood for one minute, but just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it may guarantee you what? The paradise. Why? Because in that sujood, you intended to do that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the secret of the intention. So intention connects the physical world to the unseen world. And it has levels. It has levels. So, so, the first thing, why intention is important? Because Salat is a, a spiritual ascension, not a physical, physical exercise. So if something is spiritual, so you need to somehow connect yourself to the unseen world. Because these actions are all what? Are all physical actions. Yes? So how can I do that? By connecting, by using a part of your existence which is like a bridge between your physicality and your spiritual aspect. And it starts with the mind. The lowest level of the awareness of the human being. Inshallah, I will talk about the higher levels. The lowest level is mind. Is this kind of knowledge that we have, the knowledge that we read in the books, the knowledge that we listen, the knowledge that we, you know, achieve by thinking, the knowledge that we achieve by seeing and looking at the objects. So here comes the intention. And now we can talk about the levels of the acceptance and levels of the spirituality of Salat. How can we value Salat? By looking at the level of the purification and ma'rifah and knowledge which is behind your, the, the, the person's intention. The greater the intention is, the higher the intention is, the more valuable that abada and that worshiping is. So, by understanding this part, now we need to go into the levels of the awareness of the human being. And by knowing the levels of the awareness of the human being, we will understand the levels of the purification of intention. Yes. First level, as I said, is mind. And this is very interesting that we have greater scholars like Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabrizi says that sometimes one person says Subhanallah, another says Subhanallah, third person says Subhanallah, three persons, the same physical job, Subhanallah. Yes, Subhanallah. This is the same. He doesn't add anything. He's not Abdul Basa to, you know, do that with a more beautiful tone. No, they are. Just ordinary people say subhanallah. The first can put himself into damnation by that subhanallah. Why? Because he says that subhanallah to show off. He says subhanallah because some people are around him and he wants to you know, manifest himself like a very pious person. The second one with subhanallah, his sins are, are forgiven, just his sins were forgiven. Or astaghfirullah. The third one with subhanallah is like Amir al Mu'mineen. And that person with subhanallah is going higher than what you can imagine ever. So the same physical act, the same physical act brings different rewards or different consequences. This is why we read in some narrations that lay sala ibadah to, that we say that the, 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 the reality of worshipping is not to you know, doing the worshippings too much, doing too many namaz, too many rakat. No, no, it, that is good. That is recommended. But it's not just what uh, gives us the value of the ibadah. 
But what? The tafakkur, the thinking behind that about it is important. Now we can understand that why in some narration, Ma'asumin state that tafakkur sa'atin khayru min ibadati sab'ina sana. If you sit down and think for one hour is more valuable than you go and stand and worship for 70 years. One hour is more valuable than 70 years? Yes. Because 70 years without what? Without thinking is just some physical activities. Yes. You will become a very good athlete. Yeah. But one hour of thinking and then saying subhanallah and then performing salat al fajr is, you know, life changing. It changes everything. Why? Because the thing that values the ibadah is the al ma'rifah, your awareness, your knowledge. What's your perception or conception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this universe? So with the same act, you receive different consequences. And this is why our scholars and Ahlul Bayt, they emphasized on niyyah, on intention, to purify your intention, purify your intention, purify your intention. If you want to go to jihad, purify your intention. If you want to fast, purify your intention. If you want to perform salat, purify your intention. Because the, the amal, the deed with the purified intention is much more valuable than the amal and the deed without any purified intention. Sometimes that amal without a purified intention is a means to go to, for the person to go to the hell. So this is the intention. Now, if the intention like this this is the, uh, the, the reason of the value of the different type of ibadat. How can we purify this? How can we improve, how can we improve our intention? If you're answering by saying, by you know, improving our knowledge, it's a very accurate answer to this question. And inshallah, in the following nights, I'm going to talk about this. The first level is mind. But we have higher levels of awareness. Which was given to the beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Some great scholars like Allah Taba Tabai, like Ayatollah Bahjat. They would witness the reality of Laylatul Qadr, like this night. By what? By just thinking about Laylatul Qadr? No. They witnessed Tanazzal al Malaikat to Barulahafiyah. Bi ibn Rabbihim in Kulla Amr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be like this. Not just, you know, thinking and have some imaginations of. Jibreel and Mikhail, and these are just imaginations. The reality of Jibreel is something else. Can we reach to the level to be able to witness the angels and the reality of Laylatul Qadr? Of course, yes. Allah in his book, Al, Al Wilaya, Risalatul Wilaya, he says, Yes, Imam Al Khomeini in his book, Adab, he says, Yes, definitely, this is the purpose of the creation, or some levels of the purpose of the creation. لو تعلمون علم اليقين لا ترون الجحيم سورة التكاثر. If you had the علم اليقين, you would witness the reality of the hellfire now in your daily life, in your physical life. That is possible. So, inshallah, if we want to purify our intention, we need to understand the different levels of the awareness and the knowledge. Inshallah, next night I'm going to talk about this ordinary level. Of intention which happens in the mind and many of us many of us or most of us or all of us make our intentions in our mind how can we take this first level clearly and completely because many of people they cannot even reach this first level you know the person who 
is suffering from Riyā, he never, he never feels even the first step of the intention, of the purified intention. The person with Riyā never understands anything from Salat, even the first levels of Salat. Insha'Allah, in the following night, I will talk about this first level. Me, as a very ordinary person, how can I purify my intention, which happens in my mind? Is there any way? Can I control my mind during the Salat? Is it possible? What are the prerequisites, inshallah rahman I will talk about this tomorrow. But before you know, ending the session, I want to talk about the, some tips about Laylatul Qadr. Please, as I said at the beginning of the session, please be mindful of the Laylatul Qadr. Be mindful, Laylatul Qadr. And somehow connect yourself and your heart to Amirul Mu'mineen Salamullahi Alayha. And if he, if, if, if you do something to have Amirul Mu'mineen on your side, he is on your side. You just need to understand that, you know, he is on your side. But you need to feel that by tabassal to Amir al muminin tonight, by ziyarat Aminullah, by saying Allahumma al anqatalat Amir al muminin a hundred times tonight. Then, inshallah, from now until the dawn, until the Salatul Fajr, it is very good and highly recommended to refrain from anything tonight, even mubahat, even talking to our friends. It's not necessary tonight. Every night we're talking to others. Tonight is just stick to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have uh, the, the, the salat tonight. We have dua joshan kabir tonight. And more importantly, more important as Sayyid, Sayyid Ibn Tawas states in, the, in, in, in his very valuable, valuable book, Al-Iqbal, you have to have some hours, on one hour, some minutes tonight to just think about yourself and what you have done and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the death, the time of thinking. Have this time of thinking tonight, inshallah, Rahman. And please do not forget me tonight and do dua for me. And I'm really, really in, 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 in a major need of supplication of you, sincere brothers and sisters. Inshallah, Rahman, tomorrow night we will continue our uh, discussion. I would like to uh, provide some texts for, for the following sessions, inshallah. And I'm going to search if there is any uh, English translation from this books I'm referring to. Inshallah, if I could find, shall I post it uh, to the group so you can use it. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjal faraj. Allahumma salla ala Mawlana Amir al muminin اللهم صل على قائد الغر المحجلين اللهم صل على يعسوب الدين اللهم على صل على سيد الكونين اللهم على اللهم صل على بعل الزهراء البطول سلام الله عليها اللهم صل على أبي الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام اللهم اجعلنا من خلص الشيعة أمير المؤمنين بحق مولانا وسيدنا أمير المؤمنين سلام الله عليه والسلام عليكم Warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So guys, alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of our session tonight. And that was pretty incredible. Intention is like a catalyst that transforms a physical action into a spiritual one, a link between physicality and spirituality. But anyways, I request that you all continue to pray for Sayyid Heather and remember us in your duas tonight, inshallah. May Allah forgive us and accept our deeds. And inshallah, we will see you guys tomorrow at the same time for our 10th session. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.